Hello and welcome to my channel. This is my first video and I know I have a lot to learn from this process. Thank you for your support and joining me on this adventure. I am Brianna and the artist behind Clayleaf Creations. On this video, I want to take you through a tutorial and show you my process of how I made a dragon and hummingbird scene that I visualized a long time ago. I actually postponed making this project for two years. I kept telling myself that I couldn't do it or that I wasn't good enough yet. So with this video, I hope to inspire you on your journey as well to take that leap and do something you didn't think you could do. Even if you fail, it's a learning process and there is no art without learning. What works for me may not work for you, so there's a lot of ways to improve and do things different. So please, don't be afraid to try. I hope I inspire you on your journey as well. Also, pardon the tutorial quality in some areas as I get used to recording the process and filmmaking in general. I apologize for any section that looks goofy or I end up off screen for something. I don't have the best setup and I'm trying to figure out what may be best in the future. I'm also playing around with a presentation to see what video format I'd like to use and what works best, like whether I'll keep using this avatar you see or show you my actual face and studio instead. I'd love to hear your constructive feedback as well so that I can improve the experience for you. As mentioned, I'm a self-taught artist and I've grown a lot by watching people on YouTube like Ace of Clay and KPA Creations. By the way, I love you guys. You are an inspiration and one of the reasons why I decided to make a tutorial as well. You guys have done a lot for the art community and I, I wouldn't be here without you guys. You guys really show how you do everything and it's, it's amazing to see. I'd also like to give a shout out to Cat Million for her amazing doll customizations and sculpting. You have made me really want to get into scene constructions and try things out of the box for myself. In Silent Chemia, thank you for showing your dragon wing process. I did borrow your tips for the dragon wings, but I used cost clay instead of velvet clay. It's super helpful. Again, those of you guys who are watching, I recommend you give them a watch as well so we can continue to support each other on our progress. Anyway. If you would like to support me on my journey, please subscribe here for future videos or join me on Patreon and Instagram. All my social media links are below in the description. Patreon is really like a tip jar and you get some behind the scene things, some goodies, raffles, first access to new inventory, and you get to know me a little bit more as well. Anyway, plug in and self-promotion out of the way, let's turn imagination into form. I'll go over what I'm doing and talk a little more about the lore project and give you some information about what the plans are for the future. So let's get started. So here I'm starting off with making the armature. I'm using a little bit thicker wire just because the dragon needs to be a little bit more stable. And then towards the end I'm going to be using slightly thinner wire and wrapping it around so that the clay can grab onto it a little bit better and this way the connection is secure and the armature provides a lot more stability. Since I knew the dragon was going to be laying down I decided not to create armatures for the legs. Normally for bigger projects you want to make sure you have an armature for all your pieces because you don't want it to end up breaking or being fragile just because you didn't have the armature there. And you kind of see that later on where I actually break off one of the legs for the dragons be just because it wasn't reinforced. So always make sure you're reinforcing with an armature where you need to, especially if it's going to be standing or sitting up or anything like that. But here we are, the very first armature. Now I'm bulking it up with a little bit of aluminum foil because we don't want to use too much clay and that ends up making it really, really heavy and a little bit harder to make sure that all parts of the clay are baked through. So always make sure you're adding tin foil or things to make it bulky. That's oven safe if you're using polymer clay like I am here. Uh, you don't want to make it as bulky as you want it to be because you have to remember when you're adding the clay on top of it, it's going to be adding a layer on top of that tin foil. So you want to make sure that it's just a little bit under what you want it to actually be in the end. Right now I'm going to be working on the armature for the hummingbird. So I'm making the wings for it. Um, I actually fussed with the wings quite a bit and didn't like how the first run went through. So what you're seeing here I ended up scratching um, and then just adjusting it a little bit for the wings to be a little bit more even. And I actually ended up making the wings the armature for the wings a little bit too long so you want to make them just a little bit under what you want them to be as well if you're making them feathered because the feathers are going to be extending off of it and you can cover it up a little bit better um, but here we are with the armature this is basically what I do for any type of wings and you're just gonna put clay on top of that as well And now on 
to the armature for the dragon wings. Uh, I probably should have done this before I put the foil on it, which I usually do, but this time I ended up adding the foil first. But here I am just kind of making the formation of the wings. Normally you want to use some kind of ruler or something and compare it to your references. Always have references for anything that you're doing. Um, but here I just kind of winged it, <laughs> no pun intended, um, and just kind of did it based off of what I thought would look good and then just compare the next part of the wire to what I already had on there. Now you don't necessarily have to put tape around it, um, but I was using tape to help secure the connection for the wings. And also if you're putting masking tape or something on top of the tin foil, it does make it a little bit easier to put clay on top of it since the clay grabs, gra the, sorry, grabs onto the, um, the tape a little bit better. And even if you mess up or something, you can take the tape and the, uh, the clay off a little bit better as well. Next step here is creating the bones for the wing flaps. And so generally speaking, I like to wrap around the main body of the wire. That way, again, the clay grips it a little bit better and creates a stronger connection for the uh, wing bone. Now the armature is complete. Now we can add the clay. For this project I decided to use cost clay because it is a little bit more flexible and that way it, if I have to move something or bend something a little bit it's not going to break right away. I wanted something that was going to be pretty durable and also a little bit more lightweight and I feel like cost clay is pretty good mix for that. Uh, usually for bigger pieces I use epoxy clay which is air dry clay and it's pretty strong. It's almost like concrete. Um, but here we are with the cost clay which I highly recommend trying at least once. So what I'm doing here is pretty much just covering the whole whole area with the cost clay and blending lots and lots and lots and lots of blending. So while we're watching blending, I'll go ahead and talk a little bit more about the lure itself. So these type of dragons, they live in deep, deep, woodsy, foresty areas, and they're carnivorous. They actually go after different kinds of birds, and so they have developed different ways that they can camouflage themselves and look like the things that the birds like to go after, like certain types of flowers, and then are able to hunt by using their tails as lures. In this case, this dragon is going to be using its tail as a blue flower, to attract a hummingbird and slowly as a hummingbird is feeding going to be attacking the hummingbird itself. So these creatures definitely love to camouflage and they love to use their intelligence to trap their prey. As mentioned before, this project was actually two years in the making. I never thought that I was skilled enough to do something like this. Even though I have been making dragons for a little while now, I was always afraid to give myself a chance to do this. So uh, I was kind of in a artist block for a minute and I was giving myself over to chance by doing a kind of wheel of fortune type thing of what I should do next for my projects. And this actually came up. So it gave me a chance to force myself into actually completing this project. And so so I want to again say to you guys, if you have an idea that you want to try, just go out and try it. You may surprise yourself. Um, I'm actually pretty pleased with how this ended up coming out in the end. So even if you fail, look, take it as a learning experience and keep trying and keep going and eventually you'll be able to go back and redo something or just completely create a whole new project for yourself and be happy with the end product in the end. So always, always, always give yourself a shot. Don't be your worst enemy you're already your own critic. I know I always criticize myself all the time, but go ahead and give yourself a try to do something new. 
And speaking of references and trying things that are new, always make sure you have a picture or idea in your mind. I can't draw. I really can't. So I couldn't draw this dragon for myself. So what I do whenever I try to help myself create a new project is I look at Pinterest. I look at so many different types of dragon styles, looking at different kinds of scaling and color palettes and kind of help myself construct the dragon that's in my head. Now, when I say use references, I'm not saying copying those people because that's somebody else's artwork, but you're able to take pieces here and there and help yourself construct it and also use references for anatomy, like how do the wings look when they're laying down or how does a dragon look like its legs, how it's positioning for when it's sleeping. So there's lots of different kind of artwork that goes over the anatomy and things like that. So always make sure you have some sort of reference that you can compare. And sometimes if it's going to be the exact same size as what's on your reference, you can actually use those joints to create your armature to have the perfect uh, ligaments and they're all in their positions and the lengths that they're supposed to be. I generally just kind of eyeball everything and sometimes I end up biting myself in the butt because they're not the correct size. So always make sure you're using some kind of reference and you're comparing it and making sure that all of your pieces are, are stable. And with that, I think we've watched enough blending. So how about we skip to the good part? Let's get some details. And now here, we're going to go ahead and start the base for the head. I always throw some piece of clay on there. A lot of people usually do like a circle. Uh, I just kind of make the formation this way and just start blending it and figuring out the shapes that way. But generally speaking, you can make a circle and then start adding clay for the snout. Once mostly happy with the face formation, I add the eyes so I can help myself visualize how I want the facial features to go and it just kind of helps me prepare for the next steps. I knew I wanted one of the eyes to be closed, so that's why I didn't paint the second eye here and just kind of have it as a place marker to help me visualize how it's going to have its eye closed. Now I'm creating little folds for the eyes, where the creases are, and the eyebrows as well to help create the actual facial features.
Now since this side is going to be covered, I just use a little bit of clay to cover the cabochon that I put inside there. And I'm going to start making like the creases and the formation and then adding little smaller rolls of clay to create wrinkles. With the eyes done, I'm starting to make the mouth area. This is mostly just kind of like a placement so I can decide how I want the uh, mouth to go. And now I'm just making the uh, the teeth and placing them in. So the teeth I actually pre-baked, that way it was a little bit harder so that I wouldn't squish the design as I was going. I pre-baked the horns as well and all the spikes that I'm going to be using on the back. So with pre-baking you don't want to fully, fully bake anything that you're putting in the oven until you're, like, you're getting ready to actually finish the project. So with the smaller details like this I always pre-bake it. Generally cost clay for every six millimeters of clay you want to bake it for about 30 minutes. I baked the, the horns and the teeth and everything for about 15 minutes just to kind of have it there so it's stable. And now I'm just using a little bit of bacon bond to help it actually stick to it and adhere to the, the wet clay and it won't come off as easily. I want him to be a spiky boy. So on his face here I added a line of clay on the middle and I'm going to start pinching the clay a little bit and bringing it down to adhere it to the face and then start pulling it up a little bit to start creating those spikes and form it. Sorry it's a little bit distant. I realized how far away I was from the face with the camera a little after I had already completed everything. So I hope we're able to at least see a little bit of it but it's pretty much just pressing down the clay with a little ball stylus and then I'm going to be creating little holes, like little lines in them, and start pulling the clay up towards myself to create that little spike. Now I'm going to be using the ball stylus to start creating a little scale designs on its face. I want it to have scales that are extended out a little bit, but I also wanted to create the effect of having scales been pressed inside the skin as well. So we're going to have different types of scales. Now more back ridges and adding the spikes. 
Talks. Now that I've added all the spikes that I wanted to add and created a second line of ridges, kind of similar how I did it to the face, I am now creating the arms. And again, since it's laying down, I just decided to go freeform with just the clay and didn't actually put an armature inside the arms which you would normally add so that there's support. <laughs> so there's no support in these legs, but again, it's going to be laying down and it's going to be sitting on that plaque that you see there, so I wasn't too worried about that. So I'm just kind of starting to form the hands and the fingers here using some sharp tools just to kind of create those separations there. And now with the hands and feet added, I'm adding more of those indented scales on the underbelly here. As you can see a little bit better, though I'm still a little bit blurry, sorry. But again, it's just creating shapes with the ball stylus with different shapes. Sizes. Sizes is what I meant. And with those scales done, I have now decided that it's time to pre-bake this entire sculpture. So what I'm doing here is I am using some alcohol to help get rid of any clay that is sticking out, any kind of ridges and rips and tears. That way this makes it a little bit smoother, helps blend in some of those lines so it doesn't look all janky. So that's what I'm doing here is just painting on some alcohol. And then after that, we're going to be putting them in the oven so that none of the details that we've done so far are going to get squished or messed up. And I'm going to be pre-baking at 275 degrees Fahrenheit and for about 30 minutes because there's some thickness to some of the clay here. See you in 30 minutes! And with the pre-baking done, I am using some translucent cost clay here to start creating the scales on the underbelly.
and then decided last minute I wanted to do some toe beans. So adding more of the bacon bond here to add those little beans for his toes, uh, that's also going to add a little bit more stability for when I glue him to the stump since it creates a more flat surface anyway. And now for the top scales for his hands, his arms, and his back. So what I'm pretty much doing is I'm applying some bacon bond to the dry clay since it's going to be a little bit harder for the wet clay to stick to it now. And then just kind of rolling out a small little bit of clay and then pressing it on top a little flat on top of the arms or wherever else I'm going to put the scales and then blending out the edge of it so that we have one side that is uplifted and the other side that is flat where the next part of the clay is going to go. Again, I apologize for it being blurry here. The focus on my camera kept trying to focus on my hand rather than where I was actually working. So again, I apologize that and I'll be uh, working on fixing that. You can see the process here just a little bit better, so I'm kind of adding a thicker piece of clay here for the leg ridges so you see it a little bit more prominently. And I also added some just regular circles where I just pressed some circles on top of it so we have different types of scaling on him and creating more intrigue. And then after adding all of the scales here, I went ahead and I pre-baked it again for about another 15 minutes. So as mentioned, I did break off a piece of that uh, foot there, so we're just going to go ahead and fix it. I'll show you how I did that real quick. Um, I don't have a setup where I can just do drilling and things like that inside the house, so I had to do that off camera. But pretty much, I just drilled a hole as you can see here, and then I'm adding a little bit of bake and bond, and then adding a little bit of a wire to connect the two pieces together. Uh, normally you might want to do a little bit stronger when you're fixing something like this, but again, since it's just laying down and it's going to be glued down anyway, this was good enough for what I needed to do. And now onto the wings. So what I'm doing here is I'm adding some bacon bond to the wires and the dry clay. That way again I can create a nice even bond here and it's a little bit easier to apply to the to the wiring here. And then I'm going to be taking a little bit of my translucent cost clay and throwing it through my pasta machine so that I can get it nice and flat and the correct size and everything is even and then pressing it on here. One tip I can give is cost clay does stick to pasta machines. It's very sticky. So what I did is I pressed it between some parchment paper and then kind of slowly pulled it through. That way it didn't stick to the machine and it just stayed inside the parchment paper. My strip of clay was a little bit too long so here I am just kind of cutting it down a little bit so that we just have enough to wrap it around the wire on the inside as well. You don't want it to overextend so it's just as, just as much as you need to cover the wiring. And be careful when you're cutting like this because you don't want to accidentally cut your own hands. So you probably should be wearing some type of gloves or have something behind that area. <laughs> Unlike me, I'm just kind of cutting away here. But anyway, that's pretty much what you do for the wings. So again, just pressing some clay through parchment paper in your pasta machine and then adding each section uh, by itself makes it a little bit easier to attach. And once you have some clay on there, it makes it also easier to stick to as well. And then just blending. Blending, blending. 
After adding all the wing flaps, I did bake the sculpture one last time. That way everything was fully baked through and you can see the finished product here. And I apologize for the sudden jump to a painted sculpture. I don't have uh, an area set up to actually airbrush, so that has to be outside. Main thing is I painted in stages, so definitely started with some lighter colors towards the bottom and then started adding darker and darker colors. And now here I'm adding some highlights and things to help it really, really pop. So adding some glitter and things like that here for the wings, just to make it super shiny. I will go over some of my painting process here, but with the airbrush I apologize. Hopefully eventually I can get something set up for you guys so that I can actually videotape that. Uh, that's still definitely learning in progress as well. Also, the hummingbird I ended up sculpting out of air dry clay, which is called velvet clay. Uh, I did end up doing that off camera. Sorry, I thought the camera was turned on and it wasn't. But I definitely will be making a tutorial on how to do that as well. So that will be coming. I apologize that it's not here connected to this one. But right now I'm just glossing the wings and then we'll do some other techniques here. what I'm doing here is called a wash so I'm making some darker paint here just to get into those nooks and crannies with the cracks around the scales just to create a little bit more dimension and create some nice effects here and so just pretty much a really really watered down paint and then wiping it down with a little bit of a towel or a uh, rag whatever you want to use just to create those little darker scales between and now I'm going to be using a technique called dry brushing where I take a very 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 little little paint and make sure it's almost pretty much dry off the brush and then kind of swooping it down on areas that are higher raised or places where the light would shine to create some highlights as you can see here just creating some highlights and some dimension here so that we can get those details to really really stick out and I use acrylic paints for almost everything including the airbrush so uh, I use uh, acrylics, folk art usually when I'm just regularly painting. Dry brushing is super satisfying being able to really see those details start popping especially on the face here. Love it. Washing the eye of paint with some uh, alcohol is so satisfying being able to see the eye come to life there. Here we go. All clear. And now I'm just going to go ahead and add a nice glossy finish to our big dragon here. He is almost ready. I know this video is a little bit long guys but again let me know what you guys want to see if you want to see the entire process the way I did it here or if you want me to shorten some steps just talk over it or you know just let me know what you guys pr would like to do in the future and I can improve on that. But here we are just uh, giving him a nice little glossy bath. thing to do here for our project is to create our little scenery. So I absolutely love this piece of wood that I found at Michael's. So that's what I'm using and right now I'm throwing down some um, Mod Podge just to kind of create a little bit of a glue and then I'll be adding some super glue as well to the dragon itself to stick it on there. But I'm doing that so that I can throw down a little bit of sand and then I'm going to be adding lots of bushes and things like that just to create a little bit of a greenery and some dynamics to it. Uh, but definitely something new that I'm doing. I haven't done this before so this is kind of just a new process I'm throwing together. Uh, but usually I, I use like epoxy or something to create a scene and then adding you know extra plants and things like that so this is kind of a new process I'm gluing the dragon off screen so I apologize you're just staring at the wood piece right now but that's pretty much all I did so glue for the win <laughs>
And we are done. I absolutely loved constructing this guy. I love every piece of him. And I hope I inspired you guys to do something that you maybe have been putting off to the side as well. So would love to hear from you guys to see what inspired you, what you guys are creating, and just to keep supporting each other as a community. And I definitely am planning to create other videos like this one. Probably more dragons coming in the future, but I'll also be trying to branch out into other mythical creatures. So if you're interested in that kind of a thing, please stay tuned, like and subscribe. I'm also on Patreon and Instagram if you want to join me there. And for those of you guys who are on Patreon, thank you for joining. Thank you Jenny and Stephanie. You guys have really supported me on my journey. And I do hope to continue to create these beautiful things for you guys and help inspire you guys as well. So until next time, I hope you guys continue to create and turn imagination into form. Oh, mm -hmm.